everyone, my name is Emily and today I'll be your guide into happy numbers end of year assessment. This assessment is a great tool to measure math growth and next grade readiness of every student. Quick note, the assessment is accessible starting April 15th only to students who have completed the placement test. Please keep in mind that pre-K students can take the end of year assessment without completing the placement test as it's not applicable to their level. The end of year assessment is adaptive and it covers the skills and concepts associated with the Happy Numbers curriculum for the previous grade levels. The assessment also offers valuable insights into your students' next grade readiness. As many math concepts build upon each other and their number increases with every next grade, the number of items included in the end of year test slightly differs for different grade levels. The test consists of 20 multiple choice items for grades pre-K through first, 25 items for grades two, and 30 items for grades three through five. As it is more of a quiz-like activity than a traditional test, it only takes about 20 to 30 minutes to complete. Now that we've covered the basic details, let's take a closer look at how the end of year actually works. The end of year assessment for all grades is divided into two parts. Let's take a closer look at how this works for kindergarten and grade five. In kindergarten, the first part consists of 10 questions that cover all kindergarten curriculum, as well as half of the grade one curriculum. The second part also consists of 10 questions but the difficulty of these questions is based on the student's performance in the first part. If the student struggled, the second part will focus on topics from pre-K module one to kindergarten module four. If they performed adequately, the questions will cover the entire kindergarten curriculum. If they excelled, the questions will cover topics from kindergarten module three to grade one module four. In grade five, the first part of the test consists of 20 questions that cover topics from grade two, module three, to grade five, module four. The second part consists of 10 questions, but again, the difficulty of these questions is based on the student's performance in the first part. If the student struggled, the second part will focus on topics from the whole grade three curriculum. If they performed adequately, the questions will cover topics from grade four to grade five. If they excelled, the questions will cover the entire grade five curriculum. To sum up, the end of year assessment covers previous, current, and future topics. And once your students complete it, you'll have a comprehensive picture of their performance and actual math skills. Now, let's explore what the start of the assessment looks like for students. We know how many tests and assessments your students have to take at the end of the year. So when designing the end of year test, we tried to make it different from a regular test. And our research shows that students think it is a part of our game-like curriculum so they don't get frustrated about taking it. Once the assessment starts, these banners will appear in your student's account. It appears right after the login and blocks all activities in the student's account until the assessment is completed. So let's start with the basics, setting up the end of year assessment. On Happy Numbers, the setup for the end of year assessment can occur in two ways. For our premium users, the Happy Numbers customer success team initiates communication with school or district administrators to inquire about enabling district or school-wide assessments. In such instances, administrators determine the time frame, and the system activates everything automatically. Teachers receive informative emails containing details about the end of year assessment dates. Alternatively, teachers who are both free or premium users have the option to activate their individual testing dates. I'll demonstrate how to do this using my demo account. If your end of year assessment dates haven't been configured yet, either automatically by our team or yourself, you can follow along with me to set everything up for your classrooms right away. First, let's go to the assessment tab. Here, you can see all the assessments your students took and their distribution based on the results. To activate the end of year assessment, tick the checkbox next to the end of year test. Then choose the start date for the assessment to show up in students' accounts. Click Set Test Start Date to apply the selected dates. Your students will be prompted to take the assessment upon their first login after the test's starting date. Once your students complete the test, you'll find their results under the Assessment tab. 
To access their levels, we can refer to the happy numbers end of year test map. For a quick check, look at the circle near the score. For each grade level, we have separated out groups of students based on their scores. A dark green circle indicates that the student is ready for the next grade. A light green circle indicates that the student's result aligns with the current grade level. A yellow circle indicates the student's result is one grade below their current grade level. A pink circle indicates that the student's result is two or more grades below their current grade level. Now that we have an understanding of where our students may be placed after the assessment, let's explore another important metric, the happy numbers score. For that, let's go to the yearly dashboard report. You can see three assessment results, K50, 180, 210. The first letter or digit represents the grade level, kindergarten, grade one, and grade two, and the subsequent two digits indicate the percentage of the curriculum mastered at that level, 50%, 80%, 10%. Therefore, a score of K50 on the placement test indicates that the student is 50% above the start of the kindergarten grade curriculum. Similarly, a score of 180 refers to 80% above the start of the first grade curriculum, and a score of 210 refers to 10% above the start of the second grade curriculum. Now, to answer the question of how you can evaluate your students' math growth, the yearly dashboard has been developed for teachers to do just that. It helps you better understand how your class performs on a yearly basis. It reveals the overall progress made by your class throughout the year. The top part consists of three main sections, class distribution, overall progress, and next grade readiness. The class distribution diagram compares class data at the beginning of the year to the current week. Let's take a closer look. This is a first grade classroom, and at the beginning of the year, five students were placed below grade level in pre-K, two students were placed below grade level in kindergarten, and one student was placed on grade level. Now let's take a look at their current placement after weeks of practice on happy numbers you can see that most of the students have moved further in the curriculum. There are no students left in the below grade level segment. Three students are currently one grade level below, and five students are now on grade level. Next to the class distribution, this is the overall progress diagram. This section represents the data on the progress made through Happy Numbers curriculum by the entire class. It shows the average progress as a percentage of the curriculum and the number of students ready for the next grade. The pie chart breaks the class down into groups based on percentage progress. Lastly, we have the grade next grade readiness section. That shows the number of students ready for the next grade based on the curriculum progress and end of year test results. For example, your students might not be advancing too much within the curriculum, though they might be ready for the next grade based on the test results and vice versa. If you scroll down, you'll see the individual student progress data. Here on the right hand side, you'll find a comprehensive overview of your students' assessment results and their corresponding math growth. Please note that in the Happy Numbers scoring system, a growth of 100 points is approximately equivalent to one year of curriculum growth. For instance, 105 points indicate a growth equivalent to 1.05 math grade level growth, while 50 points equates to about a half a grade level's growth. We consider a student to be successful and consistent on happy numbers if, by the end of the year, they gain 100 points or more of math growth. Sometimes you can see negative growth. This can be happening for a variety of reasons. The most common ones are number one, a student received assistance from parents or older siblings during the placement test. In this case, the placement test results can be high, but the end of year test shows the actual level. Or number two, students didn't do their best during the end of year test. We try to make our content as friendly as possible, but for various reasons, students can get overwhelmed, bored, or tired when taking the test and just click on any answer. 
In this case, it's best to reset the test. In any case, if you're not satisfied with the test results for a good reason, there's always the option to reset it. This option will be available in the Assessment tab within 14 days after the test is taken. However, if you still need to reset the test after that, please reach out to our support team with your class code and your student's name. If you're eager to explore your student's performance on the platform in more detail, click on their name to access their individual student report. Within this report, you'll find valuable insights such as the student's initial placement at the beginning of the year and the progress they've made since then. You can also track their growth by reviewing their current grade level and readiness for the next grade. Additionally, the achievements section is going to show information on the time your students have spent on tasks and the number of tasks they've completed. Scrolling down, you can also view their skills report and activity stream. So what happens next? Here are some of our recommendations and things to do before the test. Set up the end of year assessment and ensure a minimum of a two month interval after the mid-year assessment if your students took it. Notify students of the upcoming test. Conduct the test under supervision. After completing the end of year assessment, students will continue from exactly the same point in the curriculum where they left off, even if they finished midway through a task. However, if some of your students perform lower than anticipated on the assessment, don't worry. You have the option to reset the assessment and give them another try. Additionally, it's important to check that your students are meeting their weekly time target of 45 minutes. You can further support their math growth by assigning extra targeted practice with our assignment feature and by using our printables library for engaging paper and pencil activities. You can continue to support your students with happy numbers features during summer school. Whether it's assigning extra practice, filling in learning gaps, or any other needs, Happy Numbers is here to help ensure your students' continued progress to avoid that summer slide. I hope this was a helpful tutorial on what Happy Numbers end of year assessment is and how it works. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our support team at support at happynumbers.com.